Today's interview is with Faisal. It's a fascinating interview with Faisal. He has huge amounts of experience in running teams, managing teams, and coaching people as to how you manage teams. He talks to us about his journey, how he learned who his mentors are, and what different programs he actually offers. You'll definitely get a lot of benefit in listening to Faisal's interview, and his contact details are all down below. So if you are interested in him, or you are interested in some of his coaching, click below and follow Faisal and find out more about him. All right, so uh, Fraser, can you talk to us a bit about your journey and about um, how you got to this, this the position that you're at the moment and to become a, a, a trainer and a, and, a, and a coach now? Yes, um, thanks, uh, Sean. Um, yes, I've been, um, I was an, an information systems manager for about nearly, nearly 20 years. Before that, I was a software developer, a database administrator, etc. So I did a lot of work in the IT world and managed uh, software teams. But about... Um, just nearly six years ago, I decided I wanted to actually go on a new venture. So I resigned from my, um, I suppose, cushy job, uh, permanent work as, as an information systems manager. And I went into um, part-time consulting, management consulting, and I actually opened up an online training academy. Now, I had a passion for um, something called uh, mind maps. For those of you who don't know it, it's a visual thinking tool which uh, was invented by um, a British guy, actually, Tony Bazan, He's, he just passed away recently. Um, and um, it was it's about um, creating your, your world in a, in a um, thinking visually versus thinking linearly. So this visual tool is what I've been doing and I, um, I, I fell in love with it. I use it mainly from a business perspective. He used it largely in a learning um, environment but to learn fast and easier instead of taking like um, linear notes to digital, I mean, um, organic notes using this mind map tool. So I started there, but then I transitioned to applying it in the workplace and I had like great results doing that. So I thought, okay, I'm going to start. I wanted to go online and figure out how does this online thing work. So I decided to do, um, uh, open up an academy. It's called Using Mind Maps Academy. And it's still uh, available today. And I've got some courses on, online with Using Mind Maps Academy. And um, I suppose if you Google Using Mind Maps Academy, you'll also find it. But that's not really what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk a bit about my journey um, as I went online. I think it's very appropriate now also when um, the time is speaking uh, at the moment in, in lockdown, where um, m many people have to work online, work remotely, etc. And so some of the lessons I've learned from going online, I'll talk a bit about today. And also about my, um, my uh, new, I would suppose, um, offering that I've got to help people um, work better in this new, fast-changing world. Now, both um, for individuals and largely small business owners, I've helped a few of them. I've, t I've, teach, I've, I've coached people one-on-one. -on -one. I've got online training. Now, and I can also consult and help and do it for people. So that's the idea behind um, what I'm going to talk about today. Okay, cool. Then, uh, you might, then let's get started because um, this is quite, quite informative for people. And um, as a, a, like a business orientated blog, a lot of the people that I actually have reading up my blog and stuff are very, very interested and would actually benefit a lot from what you, you've got to teach. So um, can you go into what, you're, what, what, what you'd actually like to discuss today? Okay, great. You know, so um, uh, it's about my journey when I went from working um, in a job to, to, to the online world and starting my own business. Because I, as I said, I worked, I consulted part time, and the rest of the time I had my online business, and I was doing both streams. And you know, and when I resigned, I remember the euphoria. You know, I had finally gotten rid of the boss. You know, I wanted to do that. Oh, look, I've got this freedom, and I was working like 10, 20 hour days sometimes. And to start the academy, I had to create training programs, recording, set up the marketing. It was just a ton of work, but I was happy doing that because you now I was this, um, I had this new freedom in my mind. But um, I remember quite um, you know, a, a few months later, though, I was sitting, um, you know, it was quite late at night already. The, the family were, they were all asleep. I was sitting like with my, um, head in my hands, you know, um, like work piling up all around me, stressed out of my mind about that and worrying about the work that needs to be done, the work that wasn't done, worrying about the bills that needed to be paid. I mean, I remember like the, the ticking of the, the kitchen clock sounded like a, somebody banging a gong so loud at that. that that, that, that thing was irritating me. So that was, um, that's what prompted me to, to actually, um, no, I was ready. I was ready to actually find a new way of working. But um, then I got this, um, my eye caught um, a book on my bookshelf 
It's interesting the story, you know, some people say it's like, is it fake? Is it like divine intervention? Is it karma? I, I don't know. But um, I saw the book, The e Myth Revisited by Michael E. Gerber. You know, the title, the full title of the book, you wrote it in the 80s already, the first version. And it's been rehashed a bit. Um, the full title is uh, The e Myth Revisited, Why Most Small Businesses Don't Work and What to Do About It. Now, it is, it is, some people say it's like the best small business book ever written. I think it's so great. I, I love it so much. I've got like the printed book, the Kindle version and the audio version. You know? So anyway, I, I saw this book. It was late at night. I started reading it. I fell asleep actually um, like reading the, this book. And then the next day I just got up and like devoured the whole book. Now, the reason I'm telling you that is because um, especially small business owners um, who I've been helping uh, quite a bit managing their work and, and their life is that, you know, they, they start off with, with a euphoria and, and work. And while even when they get some, uh, making some decent money, they still find that they're working far longer hours and too hard for the rewards that, they, that, they, that they're getting. And it's largely because of what um, Michael Gerber said as being the entrepreneurial myth. Now, isn't it, it's interesting because he wrote it, called it the e-myth, so people think it's like e being the electronic age, you know, like email, etc. but it's actually entrepreneurial myth. He says, most people who start businesses aren't entrepreneurs who have lots of capital to invest you know, and, and, and get a return. It's mainly people who knew how to do something and have started a business doing that thing. You know, like the, um, the hairdresser opens up a salon, the, the doctor opens up a practice, um, me as a consulting guy opens up a consulting business and a training business. Yeah. I mean, that's true. I mean, a lot of people actually, um, they actually just find another job for themselves and they call it a business. So they're not actually working in the business. They're just finding an employment um, uh, funnel for themselves. Yes, yeah, so they become like um, self-employed, you know, mm -hmm. versus owning a business. So um, the, the reality of it was that um, he says that there are three roles in any business. Basically, there are many more, but the basic three roles is the entrepreneur, the manager, and the worker, or the technician, he calls it. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneur is supposed to come up with the ideas. The manager is supposed to organize those ideas and then manage all the resources. And the technician or the worker has to do the work. But as, an, as a small business guy, you have to do all three. And you have to be, come up with the ideas, manage, work, and you're working in your business. And um, I, I say what people have got is what I call a business schizophrenia because they don't know who's the boss. You know, um, it's like you're three people in one and they're all fighting with each other. Uh, they all want to be the boss and none of those personalities want to have a boss. You know, so you end up with this, with this fight. And so I was in that state you know, where I was actually sitting there and I needed help. Now, um, Michael E. Gerber has a very interesting uh, concept, uh, which I've kind of, as you can see, I kind of brought into, into this in a, in a big way. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, he says, even a business, most small businesses also go through the same three phases. And um, the, the beginning phase, he calls it the technician phase, where you start doing, you, you actually need to do something and you start a, a, a business doing that and you're working in your business and you're working and working. That is the, the technician phase. He also calls it the infancy stage. But then you transition to what he calls the adolescent stage, where you're doing all these things and you finally realize you need some help. At that point when you need some help is where um, the manager kicks in. We realize, okay, I have to get this manager. You employ somebody to do some of the work you don't like, you outsource some work, whatever it may be. It's a very similar, similar trait where you start um, handing work, getting other people to do your work. But in many businesses, they actually end up um, managing by abdication because they're so happy that somebody else will do that work, you know, and that they, that they sort of finally feel they've got uh, the freedom that they were looking for. And Sorry. Yeah, and so, no, no problem. So um, they finally feel they've got the freedom that they were looking for, you know, and they start managing the application, but then also then the business can also like fall apart. Now he says that the, the, the top tier, the, the ultimate level is that you're spending the mature level of, of the business where it's really entrepreneurial is where you're spending the right amount of time working on your business versus in your business. Because most small people go to work for themselves to work in their business. And that's exactly where I was. You know, I was going to start this business. I was working 20 hours a day sometimes, and I found that I needed help. And luckily for me, this help came in Michael E. Gerber. That's the first thing which prompted me. And I realized I needed to put some systems in place for me to be able to manage my work. Mm -hmm. And um, so also, 
what happened was when I started looking at the systems, I, I found that a common trait for people today is that um, we're still using um, tools and techniques from the, what I call the old industrial age. Now, when you were like project management tools, like whether it be Microsoft Project or Word Breakdown Structure, whatever you want to call, even to-do lists, it's when you were designing and building physical things like in a factory, every widget coming out of the factory had to be exactly the same. Yeah, so the idea was around efficiency and, and doing those kind of things. Or if you're building a bridge over, over the Grand Canyon and you're a few inches out in the middle, you're in big trouble. You know, so you had needed detailed planning, or resourcing and costing needed to be right. And so people manage work using the, and, and the way the schooling system works, I suppose, and education is to teach us good solid management techniques for the industrial age. But in a new modern age, which you're working, things are very different. You do different work every single day. You know, often people call it knowledge work. And knowledge work is something which is not doing tangible stuff. It's not doing like building physical widgets. You know, that has to be exactly the same. So we're not on the production line and we need a new way of working. And um, that's where I thought of realizing that um, my old methods that I was doing, the to-do lists, I ended up project plans. I ended up managing things in my head, you know, which is like the worst thing in, in the world. There's, um, there's a thing called um, the Zygernik effect by a psychologist called, uh, surname was Zygernik, I can't remember her first name. But she says the brain tends to work on things which are incomplete. So if you've got a whole list in your head and you, you end up uh, looping through them, so if your brain is ever looped in a way, there's a Zygernik effect taking place. You know, so getting things out of your head and managing the system was what was needed. Um, like there's a saying that goes um, something to the effect that um, if a student is ready, the teacher will appear, you know, and th that's kind of what happened with Michael Gerber. But then I started looking at, uh, I didn't realize I was, but I was a, um, um, an information systems manager in the software world for many years. And um, there was a secret that these software developers knew, you know, these nerds, um, they knew the secret called a uh, method called agile. So uh, I'm introducing you to, um, if you don't know Agile, a new term today called Agile, but, but I know what Agile is, you know, it's supposed to be nimble and fixable. But funny enough, put Agile into Google today, you'll be surprised at what you get if you haven't heard of it. It's a new Agile framework of doing work. And Agile movement over the last 20 years um, has been a big thing. Um, it's interesting, you know, when I started in IT, oh, I'm getting old now, it's many years ago, <laughs> but it was just like 20 plus years ago. Software projects always used to be late, they used to be over budget, and they never met the user's requirements. I mean, in the old days when Microsoft brought out a new release, it was like a big thing, you know, which today um, software is on your smartphone, it's released seamlessly, you don't even notice it. Now, this was largely because of this agile movement that started about 20 years ago with um, a bunch of software guys got together in Utah, ski resort, now, I don't know why they chose that in the getaway to find a new way of working. And out of that, um, that like, um, I suppose it's Africa, we call it an Indaba, they, they actually came and they had a, they came up with a new way and they wrote a, a manifesto. It was called the Manifesto for Agile Software Development. And um, if you Google it, you'll find it over there. And it, it proposed a new way to develop software, some software in a way that was more flexible, more agile, did work in smaller increments. And out of that, that process was so successful that all the big um, software development companies today, whether it be uh, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, they all have some form of agile framework. It enables software to be like on, on your smartphone, to be a lot of smaller programs uh, working independently, but still working together. It's not like one big program. Right? The internet is also based on that mindset. It's thousands and thousands of little programs and things all working together in one whole, and people started releasing that. And that's how software got to the, to the way that it was today. And I've been using that with develop, to manage software development teams. At one stage, I had multiple teams under me, you know, each one, and um, that's how, that's how we, we, we did it. And I thought, wow, that was a great breakthrough for software. Could I use it for like, the real world in my business? So that started me on that journey, you know, um, that trigger. And so I started applying that and I started getting great results. I said, yeah, it could actually work with some adapting it a bit because the agile, the agile methodology is quite, um, can be quite, um, I'm going to say rigorous when it came to software development. Now, um, I've also in that process also um, certified as a certified agile coach. I'm a certified agile coach as well to be able to train people using agile methods. 
using a specific agile method called Scrum. I'm not going to go into that. That story is also very interesting because um, he called that Scrum from rugby. And it's a guy called Jeff Sutherland and the guy Ken Schwaber. I think they, they, not even, they don't know rugby at all, actually. I think they're two US guys. But it's around, um, and they based it on the All Blacks, funny enough. Sorry, Booker. <laughs> they based it on the All Blacks, where they said people got together, the scrum, and they, and they moved the ball forward together as a team. You know, and the scrum was like huddling, and he gave his system the name Scrum, which is actually interesting. So today, when you, when you Google Scrum, you won't only get a rugby scrum, you'll also get this new agile methodology called scrum. Anyway, so I've been, um, I've been doing, um, applying that, and I, did, and I got some, some decent, um, decent traction with some adaption to make it simpler. And that was the first part of my, um, of my journey to this new uh, way of working that I've been uh, releasing. I've, I've, been, I've, been, I've launched this about two years ago. I first did it with some private people, and I developed training and coaching people, et cetera. So it's been coming on for a while. So that was the first thing. So I spoke about two things. I spoke about um, Agile, really, which is something new. No, and, and also I, I use the word Scrum, which is not as important, but it's a, it's a, a new way of working. as one of the new ways of working, which I, by the way, don't really recommend. It's quite, quite difficult to learn. But this new... Um, this new um, way of working also came with a new tool set. Now, because to work, and it's very really pertinent today that we are in this, like this terrible times in lockdown and many people at home and many people have to work from home or in a small business, you have to manage your workers and, and you don't know how to manage the work that they're doing easily. Um, they needed collaborative tools. And luckily IT in the information systems world, we've been using online tools for a while. And um, the, the the, the tool came from, um, before I get to the tool, I've got a, I've got quite a few stories as you can see. Um, there, there's, a, there's a method called, um, a new word I'm gonna teach you again, called Kanban, or as a Japanese call it Kanban. It, is, it comes from the famous Toyota production system. And if you Google the Toyota production system, you also find it. Um, it's a, a new visual card system of working. We work, it's put on a, on a visual card, and um, Toyota drove the, the just-in-time manufacturing um, uh, methodology, which was a, what they call a lean just-in-time methodology. And it made Toyota the leading car manufacturer in the world. And um, this visual card system has also been so successful that it's been done in any way where a defined workflow was needed. And um, let me think of an example. I'll get into this example, McDonald's. Now, if, um, the simplest one is that um, if, you, if, you, um, if you order a, a Big Mac or a meal, that goes on a card on the actual point of sale system, and that card moves around to the next person and the next person until it's eventually done and comes back and your order is done. So the person only works on the next order when he's done with the, whatever is done on, his, on that card. When they've done what's done on their card, they add it over to the next person and then they pull the next card. So it's called a pool system. So no matter how many people are coming up over there, they just focus on it one thing. And that production line visual card system is called Kanban from a Japanese word, which means like visual signpost, a visual board or visual card. It's a visual thing, uh, the Kanban word. So there's another word, K-A-N-B-A-N. Kanban is another word uh, I've mentioned over there. So that's gonna be a bit of a teaching session, but I uh, hope it's okay. Now, so. Perfect. So we've got this new system, our Kanban. So now you're on with Agile and Kanban. So I combine those two into a system for me, a, a visual card system. And I always um, explain it like, imagine it's like a tennis, but like a, I'll use cricket. It's like a cricket scoreboard. You know, um, if you look at a cricket scoreboard and you know how to read the scoreboard, you'll know exactly where you are. You can go away to the loo, come back, you look at the board, instantly you know what's happening. Now imagine if you, now this Kanban board is kind of like a, a, a visual scoreboard for your work. Imagine if you could just come look at your work and you knew all the work that's been done, all the work that has been done, and all the work that's coming down the line in an instant. So this visual board card system for Kanban is used for building out systems that you can use to manage your work. So it's like a visual scoreboard, but just for your work. Okay, and so um, I started applying the, the Kanban board to the agile methodology and combined with what I'm calling now the ultimate work management system that I'm calling it. I, I was bold in naming it that. So I, I actually um, bought the domain ultimate work management system.com 
and it's now live and I've got them. I've got the, 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 it's just been live recently and I've been doing some tests over there. Now, to do that, I needed a tool and I, I found that we've been using an enterprise tool in the, in the workplace for IT guys, but I found a free version called Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O, and it's a visual card system which I could build my Kanban boards on. So I use a particular way of using a Kanban board with a certain kind of workflow that you can measure work so you can see how fast work is flowing. I'm using this Kanban board and, um, and the methods that I teach is around Kanban and, and, and using Trello for that. Now, um, I always tell people a word of warning though, when you, when you find Trello, it's a great tool because it's so easy to use and it's a visual card system. You can put images of there and it's like beautiful. And I'm a bit of a visual thinker. And I like visual things like the mind map is a visual tool. So is the, the, the Trello. But the danger is it's just a tool. You know, so if you don't use a tool correctly, you know, the, it can actually um, cause as much damage. You could be in a worse, you could be have more chaos than you even had before by using the tool. And people say, ah, oh, Trello doesn't work. You know, it's like, um, and they try to do everything with Trello. It's like, because they find this thing. There's a, there's a saying, um, no, when the only tool you've got is a, is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So you try to nail everything with a Trello board, you know, and, and that's, the, that's the thing. So anyway, so I put those two together. And uh, I, I must system. admit with, with Trello, um, and as I said, it's, it's, a, it's been a system is that um, we implemented in the office uh, about a couple of years ago. And initially, I mean, I was away when they're doing, because as you know, I travel a, a lot mm. for, for my work. And I got back and they had implemented this whole thing. And within a week, I'd gone through some of the, because I've got some little training videos you've got. You can, you can also look on YouTube. And I got into it, and I found out really a week later, I was the only one using it. And I was the one that actually wasn't running when they introduced it. And yeah. um, to try, it, it, it's like anything. It, and it's actually quite simple. It's, it's one of those things that you can actually open up in the morning, have a look at it, have a look at it, set yourself up, say, okay, this is the different times of day that I want to do it. You set yourself goals for that, that period of time in between that. And then you go back and you check. And I find it really great, especially first thing in the morning before I even start doing anything. Go through what I had on Trilla, go through the, the, the systems that I'd set up. And then in the evening, just see if I've actually achieved those, those kind of goals. But in between that, you and maybe I am going through a bit of a linear kind of system that you were talking about earlier on, where you, you're just ticking off as a, as a, as a tick sheet. But still, it, it was very, very useful, actually. And much more than, than like Outlook. You've got your task list and Outlook. Um, I found there's a lot more to trill and you can add a lot more. There's a lot more dimensions you can actually add to it. So I, I actually loved it. Yeah, no, that, that's great because, um, but um, the biggest problem I find with people using a system, whether it be a time management system or this work management system I'm talking about now is, because it works so well, they tend to over-regulate their lives. And so I find that actually this is more. So when people try to track every single piece of work on Trello, they stop using it after two weeks. They've got great productivity. They, they were far more effective. They know they would, would do that, but guess what? They stopped using it. And so I try to figure out how can I actually um, minimize that, you know, to, 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 to get people to actually use it because they, they actually saw it and they liked it and it gave them their initial productivity, but they stopped using it like in your office. That's exactly what happens. So I said, you know, um, first of all, um, Planning what you do on Trello is, is going to be important. Like me, I don't do, um, and it's not, there's no rules around this, but I, my rules is I don't track all the little things that I need to do. If something can be done in a quick checklist, that's fine. Now I'll put some time in and I'll use the check and just do it. But I use it mainly for the bigger things in life, when I'm launching a new product, when I'm uh, designing a new service. When I'm, no, so those are the big things that I use it. But I also use a certain rhythm. And I've been, funny enough, um, when I started my, my, my business, my online business now a few years ago, I needed to get in some form of rhythm at home because I found working for myself, it was chaotic because I was just working. You know, as I said, even though I knew all these systems, I didn't use it. So knowing the system wasn't, wasn't that good. And I always remembered I was at a, at a particular company. Um, I was building um, an information, uh, executive information system. I was the lead uh, manager on that, on that project and I was talking to the CEO. It's a, it's a big company in South Africa. And you go to my LinkedIn profile, you probably guess which one it was. But um, no, and um, he said to me, you know what, uh, Faisal, uh, a week is just the right amount of time to manage a business this size. 
I mean, if you're talking about RAND values, like they probably do 20 billion RAND today or no, it's over a billion dollar business, if you think of business. And, a, and a week is just the right amount of time. And that, that stuck with me. So you used to have every week with these executive team, directors, VPs, whatever you want to call them, depending on where you are. And they would look at the, the figures of the business and they looked at what our wallet did last week and what are the projections for the current week, you know, and how they're doing currently and where they're going and the projections going forward. And then every week they tweaked it. So I said, okay, if a week is the right unit to run a, a, like a billion dollar business, you know, it must be good enough for me. So mm -hmm. I started implementing a very simple weekly program and I've been very disciplined with that. Every week, same time, I open my book, I open my, my board and I look at what I'm going to do for the week. And then I play out what I'm going to do for the week. And sometimes I'm not that disciplined every day, checking out every day, but next week I come again, look, ah, what did I do? What did I do? Where am I going? And I just keep it going. And sometimes I don't use it for two weeks. I just start over, clear the board and start again. So I think for now I've been using this like for five years, using that kind of a system where I, weekly I look at what I'm doing. And I've been amazingly effective. People often ask me, well, how do you do so much with such a, so few resources? And it's actually just because of this, I don't actually do more than work more than many people. I just started getting more effective. So once I started in, implementing this weekly meeting you know, with myself, I always tell people, I put an appointment with myself in my calendar. It's like a meeting with myself and I set a reminder. And when it pops up, sometimes I have to jump up and go to my desk and actually meet with myself. Otherwise I don't do it. <laughs> you know, so just a little prompt like that. So that weekly meeting. So whenever I meet with, a, when I'm coaching somebody, when I'm uh, tra training a new team, I set up a weekly meeting. And every week I just actually um, look, at, look at, I just look at their board. I ask them three questions. Um, what went well last week? What didn't go so well? And what can we do better? And that's all we ask. And just by asking those three questions, I get work flowing and get work moving. I remove obstacles, I remove bottlenecks, I remove the overwhelm, and I actually get teams working. And so when I, um, when I go, when I, was, uh, when I consult as well, the companies and I go in, um, I, at least the minimum set is a weekly meeting. That depends on the size of the team. I don't like to, um, but th the team is, this work is great for people who are about up to five people. You know, it's not to run a big factory. It's not, not designed for a whole team. So it's, for small teams, a weekly meeting is normally good enough for me to, to do that. And so what I've done is with a few um, small business owners, and it's obviously only suited to certain types of work, not everything. So I'm not saying this is like the, the hammer that can knock in any nail. You know, if it's, if it's right for people, um, then it will work. So, and the first thing I do for, for people who are actually... Um, overwhelmed as business owners and say, well, if they, and especially if they started employing somebody and they've got a team working for them, I said, look, set up a meet, weekly meeting with the team. And then we go through their board. And if they want to work with me, I can actually um, facilitate that every week. I'll run your meeting because now you meet with me and I'll manage your work for you. So you, and I've got, I've got service offering to do that as well. And I've also now put together like a training program to be able to, um, learn all the theory if you want to as an entry level. And I've got a six week um, online coaching program, which works you week by week. You watch a video, you do the exercises. Next week you want to watch a video, do the exercises. So this weekly rhythm, getting people used to doing that is the process that I follow. And um, on the same like if they can do it like by facilitated learning as well, where they watch a video, meet with me, and then they do the exercise. So those, those are the variations I've been doing, trying to just test this. You know, and I'm, so I've been testing this with like individuals, with small teams, with training programs, coaching. That's what I've been doing. That's what I thought. It's a, it's a great time to talk about this now because if your team is working from home, for example, and you have to get them to do work, let's say you're the, you're the manager, you're that, you're, that, you're that business owner, especially, I'm, I'm really intrigued by the small business person because they are struggling at the moment. It includes me, you know, and we're trying to make sense of where this is going. And we need to manage people suddenly from, from home. How do we do that? And now we can do that where I can share my, my Taylor board and talk to them and still talk like we're doing now with a Zoom session like this. Share your screen and actually do the, do the meeting live. You know, so you can do that weekly meeting, like I said, live, where you actually meet with your team, discuss what you're going to do for the week, and then kind of keep an eye on what they're doing. And so those are the, that's the process that I've been, been following and using. Now, it's, uh, the, the one word that, uh, whilst we're discussing all of this, and um, I think it's kind of key in, in being a manager or being a business owner, 
the one with the kept and jump into my mind is micromanage, micromanage, micromanage. Because a lot of people have the tendency to micromanage. Now, in your pr process of asking three questions, looking at the person's board and then asking three questions, at no stage of that did you go around and say, okay, well, what button did you touch? You know, you don't micromanage the, the, the you, you've given the person your trust and belief they can do that. You've given them the, 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 the opportunity to fail so then they can come to you and say, this didn't work. And failing not as an absolute disaster fail. I mean, something doesn't work. It's not a, necessarily a fail. It's a learning point for you to actually get to the next level. And it's quite interesting to see how you manage to do that. Now, people already micromanage in the business. Then it comes to something like this where you, you everybody's sitting at home and they're trying to manage a team at home. How can you stop them from doing that tendency of actually micromanaging to the nth degree? Yeah, so what you said is so important and, and so vital what you just said now because what happens, people's um, natural tendencies and personalities reflect on the system that they put in. If you're a micromanager now, you're going to be a micromanager if you put the tool in. And I said the one, um, uh, I know I said quite a bit, but I said one thing I did say is that most people when they come to discover a system is that they over-regulate things. They make, they put every single task on that actual, um, on that board, you know, and manage it like a micro, uh, the micro level. Now, nobody likes the micro manager. You know, everybody feels they're watching me all the time. But if you, um, you know, that's why the weekly meeting is so important. The weekly meeting allows you to reflect on the past week and plan the coming week. That's the goal of it. And you look at the past week, what went well and what didn't go well. What work is still in progress? Why is it still in progress? Try to work out, can I help you, assist you with getting at um, removing any obstacles, blockages, etc. cetera. And um, the, the next thing is to agree with your workers what they're going to do for the coming week. And it, when, you get, when you start using the system um, in a good way, I, I find that, People learned because it's a visual card system, and, and I know you said I should have like shared my, my desk, desktop. I could have done that perhaps, but um, but if you can visualize a card system, what's written on that card is very important because it must just be enough that can be managed at a weekly level. Now there can be some details on there which you need to sort out, but if you start making people responsible um, to be able to meet that criteria. They become responsible adults. And so treating them as responsible adults is the goal at the end of the day because you both agree on what you're going to do. And if the person knows, is very clear on what that instruction is, it's quite simple to just go away and, and do it. If not, then you can always add more, more um, information to that card. It's like a respect to the, the McDonald's order is a good example. You know, you're going to, a person may call order just a Big Mac. Okay, easy. But let's say a person called order is a meal. And now there must be that and that, well, a few things, and it's got a, maybe a cheese, I don't even know the McDonald's knows that well, but um, the, the reality is that person's already trained on how to create a, a Big Mac. Yeah, so the, all the card is that you say one big, two Big Macs, uh, one fries and uh, soda. Yeah, that's, that's good enough for that person. And that's kind of a way you, when you start using the system and you say, okay, I'm going to look at a, there's a weekly measurement and you can, you don't have to track daily unless you really have to. But you can actually uh, just do that weekly and you'll find that the cards are sizing themselves correctly. Now, obviously, you've got a process to go through that and help teach people how to size that. But that's the general idea, you know, is to actually uh, not micromanage, to put those cards at a level that's maybe a week's worth of work. It must be less than a week, you know, that you can do. So next week you can review it whether it's done or not. And you may end up with having a few cards in, um, in working at, at a time. So that's the idea. It's to avoid also a lot of multitasking, you know, so people kind of focus on, on what they want to do. So, yeah, so that's the, 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 the importance of not micromanaging using a system. Now, I do find that, and, and your, like your, your example of McDonald's meal, it's, it's actually a good example of, of um, seeing how much time is wasted sometimes by, well, through micromanaging. So if you, if you look at the, the slip that you, the order slip, it says Big Mac and the guy makes a Big Mac. But if you have to sit and you have to read through uh, the bun, the, the patty, the um, sauce, the onions, the salad, the lettuce, the, eventually that's five minutes of reading through all the different ingredients that the person's doing. And that's like micromanaging. Reading through the, the, the ingredients takes a lot longer than just saying burger, done, pass it out. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've got to just also trust your training. Exactly, I was gonna mention that now. So it depends entirely on how you've trained your workers. You know, but it'll also start revealing um, areas that needs better training. 
because you'll soon see in, in some cases they need to be micromanaged and then you can say okay how can i improve it so they don't have to be micromanaged you know, so that's the idea behind having a system like this um the the system uses something called a, a workflow now there's uh, if you take a um, certain um, workflows are quite uh, complex but in the basic uh, work i have a basic three system three step workflow the simplest workflow you can have on a kanban board is to do doing or in progress and done because work uh, according to that theory says all work only has three states it's work that needs to be done work that you're busy working on and work that's done and work is either done or it's not it's not like our oh, kind of done it's either done or it's not so having that simple system like that if you just have a to-do list uh, what you're doing at the moment and done and you looked at people and managed with a simple board that's the simplest work for you can have a production line like toyota toyota is a form of far more complex um, production line but in our, in our own personal work that's obviously often good enough and then you can actually start measuring what is called workflow how fast things are moving through your through your through your through your system and then you can actually if you really want to time things and work in have them manage um, effectiveness and productivity if you wanted you could actually do that as well and, you know that's the kind of business that you have so this kanban workflow system is actually a, a great way of measuring work now i know i'm speaking very abstractly now because i'm just talking about some of the concepts not demonstrating the system but the idea behind um, it's funny that the idea behind the, the whole kanban system is only two rules in the system I use, and that's maybe how maybe kind of in the from a, from a teaching perspective, I can give always give some other examples, but it's make work visible. So remember the scorecard that I mentioned, like a cricket scorecard. If you could just can just see all the work that's visible, and then you manage work in progress. That's the second rule. So the the idea of having something in progress is to actually get it done. There's only a reason why you start something is to get it done. Now, just think of all these unfinished tasks that we've got piling up over there. Because we start something and then we stop. We start the next thing and we stop. And we're always prioritizing. And that's how we work as, as humans. If we don't use a system, we naturally tend to chaos in many ways. And we've, we've got so many unfinished, uh, so much unfinished work. And so the idea behind the Scanban system is actually limiting your work in progress so that you do as little as possible to get the most done. I always, always um, use another analogy, and you know, I've been using stories and analogies a lot, but um, if you view your work like the freeway, and you want to break the, the free land speed freeway record, better make sure you're the only car on that freeway, because you can go as fast as you want to. And our studies have shown with the freeway that as it gets to 50% full, it's still flowing, but as you get 60, 70, 80%, while the freeway has got more capacity, the cars are slowing down. At 80 or 90%, we're standing still, even though the freeway has got capacity. The same thing we as human beings, while you've got capacity to do more, the more you take on, the slower you will go. And that's the kind of balance that we're trying to get with a Kanban system to get optimal flow for people so they're not working, taking on too many things on their shoulders and not getting things done. Now, if you start getting stuck is the, is, is the one thing. The other one I always used to say about the juggling, you know the whole story about juggling too many balls. I know I'm a three ball juggler. When I became a three ball juggler, I used to press the kids, you know, but throw a fourth one in and I was going to fall. So I didn't get beyond four, beyond three balls. So I know I'm a three ball juggler. You may have a three ball juggler at work as well. And getting into work of three balls may be far better than to put six balls. Yeah? So that's the idea behind managing work. So the management techniques are actually very simple, but when used together like this, uh, I think it's like a the thinking process is, is what's changed with this old agile methodology. Those agile can be methodology. We're taking things in smaller chunks because instead of planning the whole thing up front, the, the, the agile um, methodology also says that, you know, um, you must be able to respond to change versus following a plan because we do sometimes detailed plans and it becomes all about the plan. I remember when I started with um, the project management, I said, I have these Microsoft project plans we used to have this something called Gantt charts, which is like a Gantt chart where you do work breakdown structures and all the dependencies. It was with faces on the board and on the wall. And you're like so proud of it. It's like a work of art. But before the project even starts, that thing is outdated. You know? So that's, that's why people stop using project plans and project things because the plan is outdated by the time you start. 
Whereas with this agile way, you're just looking at it, in a, if you just look at it on a weekly basis. Some people call it a sprint. You look at weekly sprints and you see, okay, how did the last sprint go? Can I take on more? Can I take, must I take on less? And you're just tweaking it all the time. So it's a, it's a moving system. So that is, um, that is basically what I want to say. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just give a quick summary because it's a lot of things I said. Yes, definitely. That's okay. And, and then we can, we can talk about uh, more mm -hmm. things if you want to. And some of its applications, ask me some questions. Because the first thing I mentioned is Agile. is a new way of working. Came out of the software development world. And it's now I'm applying it. And a few other practitioners are applying it to work outside of um, software development. Some with success, some with uh, big failures. <laughs> so both of them work. So that's the first thing. I spoke about the Kanban system, which was introduced by Toyota, which is like a visual uh, scoreboard like for your work, like a clicker scoreboard, but for your work. And I spoke about workflow, where you actually get workflowing. So you can measure workflow. Uh, you get the right, there's a term called cadence. You work at the right rhythm or cadence. Every, every organization, every person has a certain rhythm and you can get that workflowing, it's optimal. And then I spoke about uh, the management meeting that you must have, which is once a week. You look at the previous week, you look at the coming week, you look at what went well, what didn't go so well, and what can be done better. And there you have it, you have the ultimate work management system in my mind. And then now you provide uh, various kind of courses. So you've got your your one on one or your your team courses where you can actually go into a business and and uh, train in a in a business in a business environment. Um, but you also offer some online courses. What what courses do you have for people to to um, and how can they connect you on to to your courses? Okay, so for um, I I started uh, using Mindmaps Academy. So there's using mindmapsacademy.com, all my courses over there. But what I spoke about today is a, a new course, a set of courses that I started. Um, it's been in, in progress for about two years now, but I, I'm kind of ready to actually take it to, to a, a bigger audience. And it's um, ultimateworkmanagementsystem.com. It's a long name, ultimateworkmanagementsystem.com. Uh, and, and you'll find it over there. If you go there, you get, you get my free book. Which, is, which you can read in an afternoon. Now it gives you the basic principles that I use. I see that, that book is going through a second draft at the moment because that was still using some of my older things in there. I've learned some new things since I wrote that book, but I'm still have it available. You can instantly download it. And then I've got an entry-level self-directed training program, which is an entry-level program which you can do and learn this and you can just watch the videos and do it. And I'll show you how to set up a system. I'll show you how to implement Trello, I have a bit of Trello training in there as well, and show you how to design it and how to manage workflow and get your workflow in. That's the, I even actually give a little test over there for your personality type. I didn't remember earlier on when I started with the three personalities, the entrepreneur, the manager, and the worker, the technician. I give a little test so you can see, are you a, an entrepreneurial type, a managerial type, or a technician type? Now, I don't know, I did a test myself. I'm a manager. I hate work. <laughs> I can help. I like to watch people work, manage people's work, but I don't want to do the work myself yet. I'm doing a lot of work myself. But I know I'm more manager. I know my, my wife was an um, organizational psychologist. Maybe also somebody interesting to talk to. Um, she, she has, um, she has um, a psychometric test that she did on me, and, um, which, uh, which is like dangerous in itself, because when she did a master's and a, a thesis, I was like a guinea pig, and I was pretty brave of me for her too, actually, as a psychologist, as, as a wife. And... Um, I'm like the conductor, she said. Now, I can put together an orchestra, but I don't know how to play any of the instruments. No, I know the drums work and the violin, the cello, and now the Miss Fatin. So that's kind of me. So I'm, I'm proud to say that I'm happy that I'm not the best worker in the world, but I'm a very good manager, you know, because that's what I've been doing for many years. And, and I'm not a control manager in the sense that I'm a micromanaging, but putting in management systems is what I'm passionate about. There's nothing... Um, pleases me more than to say to put in a management system and see it working. You know, that's, that's like, like me. So the, the management training, I've got that, the, the entry level training, and then I've got a six week program where you implement it over six weeks. You can do it at your own pace, but I originally called that um, um, live with a bunch of students where I actually took them through a six week coaching program and I recorded the videos and I packaged it as a course. And then I can do one on one, which is my, my high level program, I suppose where you can actually um, implement that six week program, or I can actually manage uh, your, your, your work or your team for you, where we meet via Zoom. I ask you what you wanna do, and I do, and I do all the management stuff. I capture it for you, I sit on the board, I manage your work. Every week I meet with you and I ask you, okay, um, 
Sean, how was last week? What went well? What didn't go well? What can we do better? That's all I ask you. And I manage your board for you. You know, and, and a lot of, and, I, and I've, over, over the years, I've had a number of people, funny from all over the world. I don't have any South African people. I'm in South Africa. I don't have any South African people at the moment because I was going at a, at a dollar rate. But um, it was more a test and I'm getting to the right price points, I suppose, for South Africa. And, um, but I've been managing a number of people. One woman opened up a nursing home. I've opened some actuaries. I, I have a guy who's had an IT company who was uh, delivering some up a, a number of different people where I actually managed their work for them for a period until I could hand it over to them because I'm a certified agile coach as well to coach them so that they can take over and run with it themselves. So my idea is to actually get rid of me at the end of the day, not to, not to stay with me forever. But I could offer that as well. But I mean, the easiest way to start is to get like the free book. You know, have a look at it. Um, down the line, I'll offer you a free uh, uh, video as well, explaining the system as you go through the system and, and just see if it's, um, it will work for you. Now, um, we're actually in a quite a unique position at the moment with, with the lockdown and the, the whole, pretty much most of the world's in this unique position where they can actually take themselves from, in your business phases that you're talking about earlier on, from the, business, the technical phase to one of the other phases where they can actually start working more on the business. Because especially if you're not doing anything, you're sitting at home, you can't play PlayStation all day long, you can't um, do nothing all, that, all, all day long, you can actually work in your business. So it's actually quite important that people can actually take advantage of this period. It's, it's, it's open to them to actually work on improving their business. I mean, that's what I'm doing from my side is we're working very hard on, on, on working on the business. And it's very rare because, as you said, you, you get to a point where you're in the entrepreneurial position where you can blend the working in and working on the business. But yeah, if you're not doing any business, you can work just purely solely on, on, on um, constructing a business again. It's as if you, we've been given a, like a, a kind of a blank sheet to start from scratch and say, okay, where can we go with our business? Um, yeah. so, so, I mean, I think, you know, people should contact you or, or you know, do some research into it and actually start working a lot more and, and take advantage of this position. I mean, you didn't have this, this yeah. opportunity when, well, you kind of did where you left your previous employment and you, you were looking for your own, your own niche and how to, to help other people out, but not many people have that opportunity. Yes, and what's, what's great about this, and I haven't really pointed it yet, because as I said, I've left my full-time employment, I'm going full-time in this, now suddenly I've got this, the skills, which um, I know how to set up an online training academy, if you guys want to train, set up a training academy, I know how to do that, almost for free, you, you can start with a free platform, like, but you just need to know how to set up a platform, I use a platform called, so I mentioned it, yeah, okay, Teachable, as a platform called Teachable, and you can set it up for free, you know, like, and even, um, and deliver a whole course, I think you, need, you can only do 10 students, but if you have 10 paying students, you, know, you can pay, get your first month's um, um, payment made by that way. I've also, um, what's also a lesson perhaps is, if it wasn't for the lockdown, I wouldn't have launched this, um, this program that I've got now. I've got a three level program, an entry level, a mid tier and an upper tier. And I've launched it um, now during this lockdown period because I'm able to sit down and sit down and automate it. And that's why I said, if you follow, even if you sign up for, for my, some of my things, even if you don't like it, you'll see the process that I go through. So that online launch process, if you want to launch a product, you know, launch a new service, that service I can also help you with, even though I haven't been selling that service, but that's definitely value in there. So all these things are coming out now because of the lockdown. I'm saying, hey, I've got actually got, I've got, actually got valuable skills that I can help people go online. You know, how to, how to build up a list, how to actually create, get leads for their business, I'm the, I'm the information systems manager behind uh, Cricket Fanatics magazine. For those of you who don't know it, it's a, it's a magazine site which I'm doing with my son. And I manage all the infrastructure. I manage the processes. My son was a lot more extroverted. I'm speaking a lot now, but I'm actually preferred to be behind the scenes. Um, he's more of the guy who likes to meet with people. And, and so he's, he's basically the face of the business. And um, he, he loves cricket and, he's, and we, we strategize together. And I put together all the the infrastructure behind it you know, and managing that. So anybody wants to go into digital publishing, want to go into um, starting online training, you know, want to get more leads for their business, I suppose I can help in that way. I haven't really pitched it like that, but maybe I would expand in, in that. But just chat to me first and foremost, you know, and then you can see if we can take it from there. So if you want to get hold of me personally, I suppose best way to go to, to uh, LinkedIn, which I'll give you my LinkedIn um, details and you can find me and then contact me on a professional level from there. Otherwise, I'll just be 
Otherwise, I'll just be punting you all my service and selling to you. And I don't want to make this a, a sales pitch. <laughs> <laughs> now that, that's perfect and they can contact you on LinkedIn and um, you've given us uh, the URLs for your different websites so they can definitely contact you there's multiple ways to contact you um, and yeah I mean you've just given us an example also of the agile way of thinking haven't you where you've got a certain course but when you've got this thing here that adds in so you can actually adapt for that you can change for this you can move around you're not just a static person that only is a one-dimensional offering you can you can actually offer a hell of a lot more Yes, and to end of kind of in a way, it's actually um, the scientific way, which people don't realize. It's to do, measure, learn. You have an hypothesis, you think about something, oh, I've got this idea, now what? The agile way is test it. Find the cheapest, easiest, quickest way to test it, get some feedback, and then you, then you, um, then you, do, then you actually go forward. Let's take an example how I did this, 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 this training that I've got now. I had an idea for agile. I was doing this mind mapping courses. I've got a few mind mapping courses, and you go over there. It's about learning and about um, building business models and thinking and all those kind of Anyway, and then I said, I want to do this course. So what I did is I sent a list out to them and said, I'm thinking of doing this, um, this course. I've got this one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching sessions which you can uh, meet with me. Just apply if you're interested. And I had a few chats with people by email and I signed up three people. You know, and, I, and, I was, uh, and then I actually tested it with them. So I had this idea, I tested it, and as I went through it, I started refining the process and now, until I could package it into a training program that I could actually package to make it a self addicted program, and now I can actually say, okay, people went to my training course, but they were struggling to implement it, so I have a, had a six-week implementation program, which is the next level. And so, eventually, um, I ended up with a, with, a, with a full product suite, but I started by talking to one person and testing my idea. I promise you the first time I did that, I didn't have a clue of how to actually do it for other, anything other than software development in my own work. No, I, I, I took a bit of, but I tested it and I learned along the way. And I told them that, and you can be honest. I mean, if you've got some skills, you know, teach somebody, if you can teach one person, well, you can package and teach 10 people online. You know, that's the, that's the way the world is going, I suppose. You know, and um, it's just, I'm just finding that this, this knowledge that I've worked on doing online training and coaching and consulting now has helped me now in this um, perhaps uh, pivot and go a plan that being my full-time career which i did it kind of part-time before I, I, I consulted part-time and i went online and i'm going to go full online and i think that's going to be um, the way that's an opportunity which i see um, going forward for me anyhow and for many others and if we look at it like that i think um, those who can will have a bright future you know um, it won't be everybody but at least some people can well, thank you very much. Um, we've got different ways of contacting you, different websites for you. Um, I've actually just gone and Googled you, so I've got your, um, uh, your contact details on LinkedIn and um, Facebook. Um, I've got your website here and even your YouTube channel. 